God the glory for the great and mighty things that he has done in these five years. How could we not stop and recognize and give him our best and say, Lord, thank you for the things that you have done. Everything that we heard, just these brief testimonies, it's just a small representation of all the great things that he's done, of all the people that he's rescued, of all the lives that he's changed, of the families that he's restored, the leaders that he's raised up. It's just a small commercial. So he said, oh man, we got to stop and recognize and be grateful and give him all the glory and all the honor. And that's why this morning we said, man, we want to overflow on our service of all the great things that he's done. And if you say, Pastor, that's how I feel, then I want you to give him a clap and a shout. Come on, somebody needs to lift up a hallelujah and say thank you, Jesus, for the great things that you've done. You know, I don't want to, I'm not going to be able to go too long. I just have a few minutes, but... I, I want to I want to leave a word with you this morning and if you have your Bibles I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 17 a word that I believe is fitting it's the account of Jesus and the ten lepers what's what's come to be known as Jesus and the ten lepers and I want you to read with me here in, in Luke 17, starting in verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into the village, 10 men, someone say 10 men, who had leprosy, they met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, someone say one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give God praise Accept this foreigner. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Lord, bless your word this morning in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. I got about 10 minutes. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to drop these points on you. Because there's some really key takeaways that I want to read. I want to highlight to you this morning. The most powerful takeaway that I, I, I look at when I read this story is the lack of gratitude that was displayed in the lepers. Now, some of you might, might be confused. Are you thinking, was there 10 leopards? Were leopards talking in the Bible? No, not leopards, lepers. Leprosy was a very serious disease in, 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 in um, these times, in Jesus' day. It was something that was you know, life ending, life crippling. It's something that casted you out of society. And men and women that, that had the unfortunate, you know, circumstances of catching leprosy, they were they became the they became the 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 um the 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 outcast of society. Matter of fact, that's where that term outcast comes from because they had to be, they were cast out. Their leprosy caused them to have to be away from everybody. And as a matter of fact, if somebody happened to, to walk in on where the lepers were, the lepers were obligated to cry out, unclean, unclean. Imagine the life that these guys were living away from their family, dealing with this ugly disease, outcast of society. And when anybody got close, they had to say, unclean, unclean. 
What we do know about these men is that they were in desperate need. We also get from this passage that they were without hope. And aside from a miracle of God, aside from a touch of God, that they would be destined to remain the same. And this is where the miracle working power of God came in contact with these men. I know it's easy today to read, you know, this story and judge them and say, look at how ungrateful these guys were. Where, where was their gratitude? It's easy now for us to stand back on this side and read their story and, and, and see their ungratefulness and, and throw stones at them. But I want to remind you today that for many of us, gratitude does not come easy. And I think that every single one of us, you know, we could look in the mirror and say, man, I think that there's been times that I have been ungrateful. There's been times that I have not recognized the goodness of God in my life. There's times that I have taken for granted the great and mighty things that God has done in my life. That's why I'm so glad that we took time to celebrate these five years of God's faithfulness. Because what we're saying is, Lord, we recognize that this is not because of us, but this is because of you. This is is your power this is your grace this is your anointing that you place upon us God has called us for this and when we stop and give him the glory and we stop and give him the all the all the praise what we're expressing is gratitude <laughs> gratitude is something that doesn't come easy Jesus asked the question we're not 10 healed you know what that tells me? That tells me that he notices. It tells me that he notices. Weren't there 10 lives changed? Weren't there 10 men healed? I like what one author said about gratitude. He said, grateful people experience higher levels of positive emotions such as joy, enthusiasm, love, happiness, and optimism. And that the practice of gratitude as a discipline protects a person from the destructive impulses of envy, resentment, greed, and bitterness. Just being grateful. And I hope and pray that this morning you're encouraged to take inventory, that you're encouraged this morning to say, man, I have a tendency to look at all the things that I don't got, but I need to take a little time to appreciate the things that I do got. Come on, somebody. I want to take a little time to be grateful this morning. A grateful heart looks forward. A grateful heart looks forward with appreciation and anticipation, believing for greater things ahead. What is the enemy of a heart that looks forward is entitlement. An attitude of entitlement will stop you from being grateful. Entitlement believes that we deserve it. How come I don't? And where's my thing? And I should have this. And I, and I, 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 I. Solo no llore. An I, I, I attitude will keep you from being grateful. An entitled mentality will rob you of gratitude. A grateful heart not only looks forward, but a grateful heart looks past. Huh? A grateful heart looks forward, but a grateful heart also looks past. It looks past the shortcomings and challenges and have-nots that could be around us. Sometimes in order to have a good relationship, you need to be able to look past. You need to look past what you're not getting. You need to look past what they're not giving. You need to look past what it doesn't have. Come on, somebody. A grateful heart looks past the shortcomings, challenges, and have-nots, understanding that it's a waste of time to get stuck there. The enemy of a grateful heart that looks past is victimhood. Having the attitude of a victim, always playing the victim, and this because they did this, and they did this. And... Huh? Come get a tissue for your issue. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. You're either going to waste time 
crying and civiling about what happened to you and how no one understands you and look at what they did to me? Or are you going to make the decision and say, you know what? I'm going to look past all that and I'm going to start to look forward. I'm going to start to be grateful. I'm going to get up and go forward in the things of God. Somebody say amen. Be very careful because that's a trap the enemy would love to draw us into, the trap of victimhood. Pobrecito me. Who would love to listen to my sob stories? Not me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I know sometimes we, I know sometimes you're going to have hard days and sometimes we need to have those friends we could snivel to. But if you're going to snivel to anybody, snivel to the guy. Sniff them on your knees. Get it out in your prayer closet. Empty yourself before the Lord. And when you empty yourself before the Lord, you know what he does? He says, now I'm going to fill you up. I'm going to fill you up with joy. I'm going to fill you up with power. I'm going to fill you up with optimism. Amen. A grateful heart looks forward. A grateful heart looks past. And a grateful heart looks after. A grateful heart looks after with a desire to secure and build and uplift. Wanting to make the best of what we have. A grateful heart will look after what you got. The enemy of a grateful heart that looks after is selfishness. Be careful of the trap of just always looking to meet your own needs. Huh? As long as I got what I need. As long as I'm where I'm at. Listen, that's not how God created us. God created us to look out for one another. Did you know when we're all giving, that's when we're at our best? When everybody's giving and looking after one another, that's when we as a community are at our best. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If gratitude reflects anything, it reflects our hearts. Amen. Some of these lepers didn't just need a physical healing. They needed a healing, a healed heart as well. Amen. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Amen. The New Living Translation says, guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. A right heart, a clean heart, a pure heart will determine the course of your life. Amen. The, 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 the key, I want, you, I want to leave this key with you. Gratitude connects you to God. That's what we see in this passage here. All of them were in a desperate need of change. All of them received their healing. One came back to be grateful. That gratitude got them close to Jesus. Your gratitude will connect you to God. The second takeaway I want to give you is this. He sees you. The Bible says that when the lepers, they saw Jesus walking by and they begin to cry out to him, Master, have pity on us. Did you know that your condition gets the attention of God Almighty? The Bible says that they cried out and that when he saw them, he spoke to them. He saw them and he spoke to them. I don't know about you, but I take comfort this morning knowing that Jesus sees me. That you are, all, you are not forgotten in the house of the Lord. Even when man doesn't see you, God sees you. I said, God sees you. I like to say that God is big enough to be small enough. Amen. We don't understand. How does God, I used to, oh, I always believed in God. I thank God of going to church and being as a kid. I always believed in God, but it took time for me to wreck. I used to believe, yeah, but God's way up there, and I'm way down here, and he doesn't notice me. It's like an ant, all the ants. I'm just one of the ants right there walking by. <laughs> because my little ant brain couldn't understand that God is big enough to be small enough. And he sees you this morning. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand of praise. And I'm going to ask him if our, our worship team could come. And I want to give you the last takeaway of, of this, this passage here with the lepers. The third and final takeaway I see is obedience is key. Obedience is key. That's a bad word for some people right there. <laughs> Obedience. What you talking about? Obedient, don't come on, somebody. Huh? <laughs> Obedience is key. Where, where am I getting that from? I'm getting that from verse 14 when it says, When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priest. 
go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. You know, I wonder how many of us, you know, are able to stop and really kind of get a picture of how hard it must have been for those men to do what Jesus was asking them to do. These men were full of leprosy. Leprosy was a flesh-eating disease. It caused them to be social outcasts. Who knows how long they've been dealing with that? Who knows how long they were hiding under the bridge, by the railroad tracks, behind the building somewhere? Who knows how long they were in addiction? Who knows how long they were in their pain? And he said, go show yourself to the priest. In other words, you want me to go to the city? You want me to endure that hardship and that pain and that rejection? You want me to take this hard road? You want me to do this thing that is so difficult for me to do? But what they didn't realize was on the other side of their obedience was their miracle. If we're going to take away anything from this passage, take away this, is that your obedience connects you to your miracle. I was so grateful that I was able to see Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie the other day. I love them so much, you know. He pastor's been dealing with some problems with his knees, and we were hoping that they'd be able to make it to the banquet. But, you know, I saw him I saw him the other day, and uh, he said, oh, man, I said I really wanted to be there, my knees, and he had his cane, amen. And I thought, you know, we're getting ready to celebrate Pastor Sonny's 85th birthday in, in, in December. And, you know, some people, they see how much, how grateful we are for our pastor, and they think, Oh, you know, worship Jesus. Don't worship your pastor. By the way, we don't worship no man. Come on, somebody. You know what you see? You see honor there yeah. and gratitude. You know why? Because God has done some great and mighty things throughout yeah. the years. And I know, and I give all the glory to God because I know it was his power. But I'm going to tell you this. I believe that God partnered with pastors' obedience. And the Bible says, as they went, the healing began to kick in. Who knows how they were when they started walking, but every step they got stronger and stronger and stronger. Some of the miracles of God are progressive. And as you are faithful and obedient and you keep walking and you keep going and you keep showing up, you're getting stronger. So what am I saying to you this morning, Victor Outreach? Keep going. Keep giving, keep reaching, keep teaching, keep sowing, keep showing up. Because with every step you take, you get stronger and stronger. And I believe he's not done. He's looking for people to partner with. He says, there's more miracles I want to do. There's more people I want to reach. You know what I was thinking about? It. Stand with me this morning first service at the end of the first service after I was thinking I wonder if he had a plan for those 10 lepers I wonder if there was 10 cities with their names on it I wish we could read about them you know whatever happened to them but I know this he does it to you and then he does it through you that's what I saw in the video I saw people that said man I came and God was healing my marriage and God was healing my life but what they didn't recognize that one day he not only was going to do it to him he was going to do it through him hallelujah well thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina we hope you enjoyed your time also I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell that way you get notified every time we go live you won't miss a service stay connected with us and you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that god is doing here you can do that at any time i hope you share it and i hope you come visit us live real soon god bless you